Welcome to Concept in Medicine. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at the HIV medications, also known as the highly active antiretroviral therapy, or simply antiretroviral therapy, ART. Before we begin, let's look at the question in our previous series. That is, why does HIV belong to the family of viruses known as retroviridae? The answer is, HIV encodes the enzyme reverse transcriptase, hence classified under the family of retroviridae. Congratulations to all those who got it right. Let's move on to our session today. Today we are going to be looking at the HIV medication, specifically the antiretroviral therapy drugs. All right. First of all, there are about six classes of medication for the treatment of HIV. So we'll start with the first one, that is the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. It can also be referred to as the nucleotide reverse transcriptase inhibitors. Okay, so we'll start with the class, the examples of medications under that class, the mechanism of action, and the adverse effects or the side effects. So let's begin with the class. So the first class, we have the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. We can also replace the nucleoside with nucleotide, which we understood. Nucleotide will have the phosphate group. Nucleoside will lack the phosphate group. The examples, we can remember using the last test. The last test. So we have D-L-A-S-T-E-Z. The D standing for didanosine, which is written as D-D-L. We we'll have the L, that's lamivudine, written as 3TC. Those are the symbols. Then we have the abacavir, written as ABC. The S will stand for stavudine, written as D4T. Then we have the T, which is going for tenofovir, which can be written in two forms. We have the TDF or the TAF, meaning depending on the combination that they are. If we take the TDF, it stands for tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate. But if we take the TAF, it stands for tenofovir alafenamide. So depending on which one you have, the symbols might differ. Then we can talk about emtricitabine, which goes for FTC. Then finally the Z is zidovudin, which stands for ZDV. Let's move on and look at the mechanism of action of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. For the mechanism of action, the nucleoside reverse transcriptase, they bind to the active site of the enzyme reverse transcriptase, preventing the formation of the 3,5-phosphodiester bond required in the growing of the DNA. Meaning, without the formation of the 3,5-phosphodiester bonds, the proviral DNA would not be formed. So, the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors are able to do that because they lack the 3-hydroxyl group. They are able to bind to the active site of the reverse transcriptase, preventing the formation of the 3,5-phosphodiester bond. In addition to the mechanism of action, the nucleoside reverse transcriptase, whenever they are incorporated, when the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors are incorporated during the RNA-dependent DNA synthesis, they inhibit the production of the positive or negative strands of the DNA. Let's move ahead and talk about the side effects of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, also referred simply to as the NRTIs. For the side effects, we can remember easily using PLABS, that is P square LABS. So the first P, it stands for pancreatitis. Mostly the pancreatitis is an adverse side effect of the, this particular medication, that is the didanosine. Pancreatitis, didanosine. The next one is peripheral neuropathy. The next one, lactic acidosis. The next one, anemia. And for anemia, it is going to come from zidovudin. That is why, in giving the zidovudin in children, especially, 
when their hb is less than eight gram per deciliter zidovudine is contraindicated because it can cause hemolysis of the red blood cells worsening the already existing anemia it is contraindicated in children especially with an hb less than eight gram per deciliter then the b goes for bone marrow suppression then finally the s is going to come from hepatic steatosis and for the hepatic steatosis we are taking the s from the steatosis so to simply remember the adverse effect or the side effect of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors think of PLAPS that is pancreatitis peripheral neuropathy lactic acidosis anemia bone marrow suppression and hepatic steatosis let's move ahead and look at the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors written as N N R T I's to easily remember the medications under the NNRTIs think of need so the need we have the N going for nevirapine which is written as NVP the E we have efavirenz written as EFV the next E we have etravirin written as ETR then finally we have delavidin delavidin is written as DLV let's talk about the mechanism of action of the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors for them they bind to a different site they do not incorporate themselves into the reverse transcriptase they bind to a different site we call the allosteric site of the reverse transcriptase and when they do that they create a hydrophobic pocket proximal to the active site remember for the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors they will bind to what the active site but the non-nucleoside they bind to a different site other than the active site creating a hydrophobic pocket proximal to the active site and when they do that it causes an allosteric inhibition of the enzyme reverse transcriptase slowing the dna synthesis and when we say dna synthesis specifically of the hiv1 reverse transcriptase another important feature of this medication is that they do not require intracellular activation by phosphorylation so the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors they do not require intracellular activation by what phosphorylation unlike the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors which require the intracellular activation by phosphorylation the second one is that they are non-competitive hence if we take the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase they are inactive against hiv2 reverse transcriptase they are inactive against hiv2 reverse transcriptase but if we think the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors they compete they compete a lot hence they fight against both hiv1 reverse transcriptase and hiv2 reverse transcriptase let's move ahead and look at the side effects or the adverse effects of the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors to easily remember think of herpes simplex virus which is written as hxv the h will go for hepatotoxicity the s is the skin rashes and the v is the vivid dreams and for the vivid dreams remember the v vid v rens v rens v rens for vid v rens for vid so if you want to know which specific drugs in here causes the vivid dreams remember v rens v rens v rens for what vid so a five rens is responsible for what the vivid drugs okay we'll move on to talk about the integrase strand transfer inhibitors as the next class let's move ahead and look at the integrase strand transfer inhibitors as a class which is written as the isti's the examples to easily remember think of i red i for integrase strand transfer inhibitors and the red for the medications the r is going for rastegravir which is written as RAL, that's RAL. We have the Elvitegravir, which is written as EVG. And finally, Dolutegravir, which is written as DTG. And remember that all integrase strand transfer inhibitors end in Tegravir, that is Tigris, Tigris, so Tegra, T 
Tegra Vir to Tegra against the virus. Tegra Vir. All right, let's move ahead and look at the mechanism of action of the integrase strand transfer inhibitors. What do they do? They inhibit the incorporation of the proviral DNA into the host genome by preventing the formation of covalent bonds with the host DNA. And anytime they prevent the formation of the covalent bond with the host DNA, there is failure of incorporation of the proviral DNA into the host genome. Let's move ahead and look at the side effect. For the side effect, it's very simple. The creatinine kinase levels will be elevated. Creatinine, create. If you look at create, create. Look at integrate. So grace for create. That is how you remember. Let's move ahead and look at the next class of antiretroviral medications. That will be the protease inhibitors, PIs. Examples, they will always end in Navir. So we are looking at lean sr so we have lopinavir which is written as lpv indinavir written as idv nefirnavir written as nfv then we have sacunavir written as sqv ritonavir written as rtv so if you watch very carefully realize that all of them end in navir 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 all right let's move ahead and look at the mechanism of action so for the protease inhibitors, they selectively bind to the viral proteases, blocking the proteolytic cleavage of protein precursors. That is the GAG and GAGPO, the GAG and GAGPO polyproteins, necessary for the production of virions. And once again, what are virions? The infectious form of the virus outside the host cell. All right, let's move ahead and talk about the adverse side effects of the protease inhibitors. So in that, to easily remember, think of please help. Please, that is the protease inhibitors. Help, so help, we are looking at it. The H goes for hyperglycemia. The E is coming from the E in nephrolytasis. Then the L, we are talking about lipodystrophy. Then the P, we are talking about the p450 blockades those enzymes that have the cytochrome p450 they block the p450 so those are the side effects of the protease inhibitors let's move ahead and look at the final classes the last two classes so we have the entry of fusion inhibitors examples we can talk of maraviroc which is written as mvc and you should know that maraviroc is a ccr5 antagonist that's a cellular chemical receptor 5 antagonist. Other example, we have the enfuvitide, which is written as T20, and ibalizumab, which is written as IBA. You should know that the entry of fusion inhibitors are indicated for drug-resistant HIV-1. Let's look at the next class. That will be the glycoprotein 120 inhibitors. An example is Fostem Savir, which is written as FTR. So in short, these are the six classes of the antiretroviral medications. You should take note that the first class, that is the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, they are the first class of antiretroviral medication to be approved worldwide for the treatment of HIV. Let's move ahead and look at the last thing. That will be the regimen for the combination of the antiretroviral medications. So the principle is that at all times you would use two of the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors plus any one of the following and the following either you are going for a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor or you are going for a protease inhibitor or you are going for an integrase strand transfer inhibitors an example of the regimen would be tenofovir plus emtricitabine plus dolutegravir and we know that tenofovir and emtricitabine belongs to the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors and that will fulfill the first principle and we have dolutegravir which is an integrase strand transfer inhibitor which will fulfill this principle another example we have tenofovir and lamivudine and efavirenz tenofovir and lamivudine they are the nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors 
Then efavirin belongs to the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors. I believe we've learned a lot today. But before we end the lesson, I have a question for you. And the question is, why is HIV difficult to diagnose in young children? Or why is HIV difficult to diagnose in pediatrics? Make sure to leave your answers in the commentary session. Kindly make sure to subscribe to my channel, like, share, and also comment the next concept you would like to see in my next tutorial session. My name is Dr. Adele, and this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.